All right, sports fans, how's everybody out there doing? William Martin coming at you one more time here on YouTube with another edition of the 300 Pounds of Sports Knowledge Podcast. Now, it is no secret that there is mutual interest between the Brooklyn Nets and Houston Rockets guard James Harden. Now, all signs right now point to the Rockets being in rebuild mode. Uh, they've already parted ways with longtime general manager Daryl Morey. They have a new head coach. And you can see both James Harden and Russell Westbrook being shipped out of town um, between now and the start of the next NBA season. Now, in the case of Harden, he has spent the last eight years of his NBA career with the Rockets where he has established himself as one of the most prolific scorers of this era. We're talking about a guy in James Harden who was the NBA's MVP in 2018. Um, you know, he's been to multiple All-Star games, uh, been on the Olympic team, you name it, any individual accolade that, that's out there from an offensive standpoint, James Harden has done. But you know that times have changed and you know that a player is frustrated when he's willing to walk away from the amount of money that Harden is willing to walk away from. He's willing to walk away from getting an extension that would pay him $50 million for the upcoming season. So that just lets you know uh, what time it is for James Harden with the Rockets. Now, for the sake of argument, if Harden were to go to the Nets, you just have to ask yourself, would things work out with him, Kevin Durant, and Kyrie Irving? Now, Harden and Durant have obviously been teammates before. They uh, start, each started out their respective NBA careers with the Oklahoma City Thunder. They helped that franchise reach the NBA Finals in 2012, and they lost to the Miami Heat in five games. And right after that, Harden was traded to the Houston Rockets after it became quite apparent that the Thunder could not afford him. So there's always been a bond between Harden and Durant. I look at the X factor here being Kyrie Irving, and you look at it, and first and foremost, I don't see enough basketballs in Brooklyn to go around to keep everybody happy, because when you're talking about Irving, when you're talking about Harden, when you're talking about Durant, all of these guys need the basketball in their hands to be effective. All of these guys are ISO players. So basically, if you're anybody else on that roster, you just better go crash the boards if you want to keep yourself active. You look at it, it's a recipe for disaster. You have a first-year head coach in Steve Nash with the Nets who has never been a head coach, never been an assistant coach for that matter. And now you want him to deal with all of this. It's not going to work. The Brooklyn Nets would definitely be a box office marquee. Yes, uh, they, they would they would be must-see TV. But if you're talking about putting all three of them together to win a championship, eh, eh. now, of course, you know, Steve Nash did make one smart move. He did bring in former Rockets head coach Mike D'Antoni, who most recently worked with Harden to be an assistant coach under him in Brooklyn. And of course, D'Antoni does have a standing relationship with James Harden. But at the end of the day, I see too many egos at the table right here for this to work. Anytime that you have a big two or anytime that you have a big three or big four, whatever you want to call it, whenever you have a litany of superstars or all-star caliber players on your roster, the only way that it works is if people are egoless. You go back to the Lakers, and I'm talking about the Lakers of the late 1960s, early 70s, when they had Elgin Baylor, Jerry West, and Wilt Chamberlain. It worked because you had three players that had three different styles of play, and everybody came together in order to win. When you talk about the Celtics of the 1980s, led by Larry Bird, it worked because everybody had a workmanlike attitude on that team. Everybody's style was different, and everybody wanted to win. It's the same thing for the Showtime Lakers of the 1980s with the likes of Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and James Worthy. Different styles of play, but everybody came to work together. It was the same thing with the Bulls of Michael Jordan, Dennis Rodman, and Scottie Pippen. Different styles of play, everybody came to work. Even with the Boston Celtics in 2008 when they won the NBA championship. When you had Kevin Garnett, you had Ray Allen, and you had Paul Pierce. Three different styles of play, but it came down to Kevin Garnett sacrificing or will being willing to sacrifice his offensive game, heighten his defensive game for the greater good of the team. 
that's what it comes down to. And I don't see these three guys and Harden, Durant, or Irving doing that. But all three of these guys are one-dimensional. They're all scorers. And you, you, you put them with the Nets, they'll definitely be a playoff team. They'll definitely be exciting. But in title, eh-eh, it's not going to happen. So, I mean possibility of this um, deal going through. I know some other teams are definitely going to be interested in James Harden. James Harden looks like he wants to go to Brooklyn. And knowing the Nets and knowing their track record, I know that they have a new ownership group, but they're going to bet the farm to get James Harden if he really wants to be there. So, I mean, it's going to be draft picks, it's going to be players, you name it, that they're going to send back to Houston. And the Rockets are definitely not going to have a problem in getting all of that. But it's a situation it's going to look good on paper for the Nets. It's going to look good on paper for the people of Brooklyn. But at the end of the day, a trio of Kyrie Irving, James Harden, and Kevin Durant will not get the Nets any closer to an NBA title than the than any trio that they've had uh, throughout their uh, throughout their franchise's history. So it looks good. Don't believe the hype. And bottom line. Don't drink the Kool-Aid in regards to the Nets. So, folks, that is going to wrap it up. And as always, I want to take this time out to thank you for tuning into the 300 Pounds of Sports Knowledge podcast here on YouTube. I want to thank all of you subscribers out there. And if you have not already, please feel free to subscribe to this channel. Now, if you're on Twitter, please feel free to follow me at 300 Pounds of Sports. And like I always say, if you follow me, it'll be my pleasure to follow you right back there is also the sports discussion group on facebook at the sports depot 365 you can check it out drop a line and be a part of one of the better sports debating sites going on social media so once again fine folks my name is william martin take care and have yourselves a wonderful day